I think we can all agree that modern football has some issues. VAR has made major mistakes in the past, statistics are used by people who don't even watch the sport, football podcasts make me want to murder someone. So yes, there are lots of things to be frustrated about with modern football, but the one that gets me is the death of the long sleeve football shirt. <laughs> Long sleeve kits used to be as common as short sleeves. Oftentimes you'd see players wear them for the majority of the season, at least in England because of the weather, and sometimes players would be wearing them all season round. Except for Kieran Tierney, but you know, he's Scottish, so that makes sense. In fact, long sleeves were so common that some players are even associated with them. Try to picture David Beckham in an England kit without long sleeves. It's it's just not possible. You think of his free kick celebration and the captain's armband and revealing how f***ing baggy the kit truly is. Now look, those baggy and loose long sleeves, obviously very goofy looking, are at least iconic and definitely better than those tight form-fitting things that Puma always releases. Because speaking of iconic, not only was David Beckham seemingly always in long sleeves, but so was Gerard Piquet and, at least when the weather called for it, Sergio Ramos. But now, instead of these stunning beauties that would be the crown jewel of our kit collections, we have players phasing them out for undershirts and base layers. Except for Tierney, because again, he just wears short sleeves. What the hell is wrong with this man? Now I say this is a modern football thing because it's exactly that. Long sleeves were the norm for the longest time, even being the main style that players would wear during their games regardless of temperature, because if it was hot out, they would just roll up their sleeves. This dated all the way back to 1526, when it was noted that King Henry VIII had football boots in his wardrobe. This has nothing to do with long sleeve kits, I just wanted to poorly edit that guy, thunder at top bins wearing Nike materials. However, long sleeves actually do go back pretty far, pretty much to the start of football, because if you look at the pictures of the first football clubs in the late 1800s, you'll see that every club, every squad player was wearing long sleeves. A lot of the fashion and design of football kits was essentially copied from rugby because at the time, that was the most dominant sport. And since rugby players were wearing these long sleeves, football players did the same. This continuation of long sleeve kits continued for years, and although short sleeve kits began popping up in the first half of the 1900s due to shirt material improving, athletes wanting better and more durable equipment, and the game spreading across the globe to warmer areas, long sleeves were still the norm and the basis for design and competitiveness. More options were now being available for these players, and instead being forced to wear something they might find uncomfortable, they now have these two options. And even though this stayed the same way for a while, long sleeves continued to be the standard kit, especially during the mid-1950s to 1960s. During that time frame, Real Madrid won five straight Champions League titles, and their all-white kits were usually always worn with long sleeves. This type of domination would obviously have some influence on kit manufacturers and other clubs, so long sleeves continued to be the norm. In fact, Umbro even released a kit called the Real to signify their dominance with, of course, long sleeves. But by the time Real Madrid's dominance was over, the switch from long sleeves to short sleeves would change in just about eight years time. And you could see that switch during the World Cup. If you look at the countries in the 1962 World Cup, most of them were repping long sleeves. Then about four years later at the 1966 World Cup, the styles were split down the middle and it was mostly about preference, and you could see that during the final. England players were all wearing long sleeves, while West German players were all wearing short sleeves. And then finally, at the 1970 World Cup, the transformation was complete, and most countries were wearing short sleeves in order to stay cool in the weather. Even England, one of the more traditional countries who typically wore long sleeves, switched to an umbro-made short sleeve kit that was form-fitting and mimicked the look of modern-day kits. Seeing Bobby Moore wearing this tight style of jersey makes me incredibly uncomfortable. From this moment to around the 2010s, these kits would stay pretty much exactly the same. Now, of course, kits would continue to evolve in order to help the athletes perform by using better materials for their kits. Sponsors came in, and other companies would start making their own kits, but there was a harmony between long sleeves and short sleeves. And during this time period, we saw many iconic moments happen with players wearing long sleeves, like that David Beckham free kick I mentioned earlier, 
or Ronaldo hitting a screamer against Porto. We've also seen our fair share of amazing long sleeve kits. I mean, we got Roma in their iconic wolves all the way down their sleeves. We got Real Madrid's 2011 white kit with the gold stripes, again, all the way down the sleeves. We got Mexico's beautiful Aztec design on their green kit. I mean, Mexico and Adidas just put out some fire tops, I'm not gonna lie. Unfortunately, almost around two decades ago, we started to see a player start to wear these undergarments, these base layers that we see modern day footballers wear. Wayne Rooney was the one who essentially pioneered this change from long sleeves to short sleeves and a base layer. You can actually see this when Ronaldo hits his free kick against Portsmouth in 2008. Mostly everyone on the pitch was either wearing long sleeve kits or short sleeves, but Rooney was the only person wearing a base layer. This was also around the time when moisture wicking material became popular and actually affordable to the main public, with Nike's dry fit being developed in the early 2000s. And it just so happens that not only was Manchester United's kit manufacturer Nike, but Wayne Rooney was also sponsored by them personally. It's also obvious that players want and need every single advantage they can possibly get, and companies were suggesting that these tight fit base layers helped with performance and injury prevention. With United being one of the best clubs in the world at that time, one of their best players being the poster boy for base layers, and researchers saying that these types of base layers can actually help a player's performance, it was a perfect storm to essentially kill off long sleeve kits. And you can see that long sleeve kits have dramatically fallen off in the past decade with this revolution of undershirts, a ploy by big base layer. Clubs that used to wear long sleeves in the winter, like Arsenal for example, are instead wearing base layers when appropriate. Some clubs like Liverpool don't even offer the chance to buy long sleeve kits anymore. Now while I don't think long sleeve kits will be making a return anytime soon, there are thankfully some players who still continue to rep them. Leroy Sané, for example, still wears long sleeves for Bayern and will occasionally wear it for Germany, alongside his national teammate Kai Havertz. Ronaldo has typically been a wearer of long sleeves for his whole career and it's not stopping now, even while playing in Saudi Arabia. Griezmann is also a fan of this style when Whenever he can wear it, although Atletico Madrid didn't provide him one for their 120 year anniversary kit. And suddenly, I'm the biggest hater of that bum club in Spain. Yeah, I'm hating a club because it wouldn't provide a player a long sleeve kit. Now, wouldn't you say that makes me hate every single club? Yeah, yeah, yes I do, yes I do. Bring back long sleeve kits, please. Look at how cold some of these kits are. Long sleeves can make a kit so much more aesthetically pleasing. Even something as simple as a single line drawn down the sleeve adds so much to how good the jersey looks. Oh my god, the gold stripes on the Arsenal kit? Come on, man, are you serious? You're taking this away from us because apparently it helps cramps what do they need their arms for? One of the best Stuttgart players in history only had one arm. I think these guys can suck it up to give us some dope kits. Now look, I know modern football has some bigger issues at the moment and this itself isn't really that big of a deal, but I do feel like long sleeves are an iconic part of the game that was pretty quickly taken away from us. If players themselves don't wanna wear these long sleeve kits, that's fine, it's obviously up to them, and you'd be dumb not to try to get every single small advantage in order to get the best performance and prevent injury. But I do think a cool part of the sport is seeing all of these brand new designs with virtually every club every season. There are so many different cultures, leagues, and individuals who have an eye for this thing that can create something genuinely beautiful to a specific club and its surrounding community. Now you can obviously still do the majority of this with a short sleeve kit, but long sleeves can give someone extra space to add something unique. At the very least, clubs should have an option to buy long sleeve kits. I don't care how much extra it is, if I were to see this kit with long sleeves, I'd pay an extra $50, $100, I don't, I don't care. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, guys. If you have a specific long sleeve kit that's a favorite in your collection, be sure to let me know down below. But like I said, that is going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Fuck Wayne Rooney.